गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स सो टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द लाइफ हिस्ट्री ऑफ सिल्क मॉथ एंड ऑल्सो हाउ डू वी ऑप्टेन सिल्क फ्रॉम द कुकूंस ओके नाउ लेट इज स्टार्ट सो देर आर फोर स्टेजेस इन द लाइफ हिस्ट्री ऑफ सिल्क मॉथ ना वॉट आर दीज स्टेजेस द फर्स्ट स्टेज इज द एग स्टेज सेकेंड इज द कैटापिलर और लार्वा और सिल्क वॉम स्टेज द थर्ड इज द प्यूपा और द प्यूपल स्टेज एंड द फोर्थ वन इज एडल्ट okay now let us understand this life history through the diagram given in your ncert textbook now children this is a diagram showing the life history of silk moth and this diagram you have to draw in your notebooks also remember this okay now as you can see that these are the adult silk moth the male and the female now at first what will happen the female silk moth it will lay hundreds of eggs on the mulberry leaves okay this these uh, this is a mulberry leaf and hundreds of eggs will be laid on these mulberry leaves fine now after 3 to 5 days the larvae will hatch out from these eggs and then they will be known as caterpillars or silk worm now these caterpillars they will feed on these leaves okay and then by feeding on these leaves by eating these leaves they will grow in size now when this caterpillar Now, after five to six weeks, when this caterpillar will be ready, uh, will be ready to enter the next pupal stage, then it will stop feeding on these leaves. Okay, after five to six stage, when it is entering the next pupal stage, fine. So, what will happen at this? It will weave a net to hold itself. Okay, so in this manner, it will swing its head from side to side in the figure of the form uh, or in the uh, figure of eight. Okay, now what will happen during these movements? When it is moving its head from side to side, it will secrete a fiber from its salivary glands. Okay, a fluid, a sticky fluid will be secreted. That is a protein named as fibroin. Okay, okay. So this is the protein named as fibroin. Okay, this is very important protein. Okay, now this protein it hardens on exposure to air. when it is exposed to air it becomes hard okay and at this stage it becomes silk fiber fine now the thread gets wrapped around the body and it forms a ball like structure that is known as cocoon fine okay so see this diagram here the thread is getting wrapped around its body and you can see a ball like structure is here so at this stage is it is known as or this structure is known as what cocoon fine now at this stage the caterpillar becomes what it becomes pupa now inside this cocoon the silk moth it continues to develop okay it develops inside this cocoon and at the end of this pupal stage the silk moth okay that will cut open this cocoon and the young moth will fly away okay so this was the life history of the silk moth fine now let us revise through these points first laying of hundreds of eggs second one the caterpillar coming out of these eggs third stage before entering the pupal stage okay then it will weave a net to hold itself and it will swing its head and it will secrete a fiber that will be known as fibroin that is a protein which hardens on exposure and from here we are getting silk fiber okay then it forms a ball like structure okay because the thread is getting wrapped around it its body and it forms a ball like structure known as cocoon so for at this stage the that caterpillar is becoming what it is becoming pupa the silk moth it continues to develop inside that cocoon and at the end of that stage that is a pupal stage it will cut open that cocoon and it will fly away now let us let us understand how to obtain silk from the cocoon for this we have various steps let us learn okay so here uh there are two processes first is the rearing of silk worm and next one is the processing of silk okay so first let us understand the rearing of silk worms in this first step is there in which the eggs will be stored carefully on the strips of cloth or paper and then these eggs will be sold to the silk worm farmers step number 2 here the farmers will keep these eggs under the suitable hygienic conditions under the suitable conditions of temperature and humidity which is required okay and they will store it there they will store the eggs over there until the caterpillar comes out of the shell step number 3 these caterpillars they will be kept in the bamboo trays and here they will keep 
some freshly chopped mulberry leaves so that these caterpillars may feed on them and they may grow in size now in the next step when these caterpillars they will stop feeding then they will be shifted to the bamboo chambers okay and in those bamboo chambers they will be provided with a small racks twigs so that they can be attached get uh, attached to these twigs or small racks and then they may spin cocoons over there now inside the cocoon the pupa is still growing okay okay the pupa is continuing growing over there also in step number 5 what will happen the moth will cut the cocoon and it will fly away now the next is the processing of silk till here it was known as the rearing of the silk worms that is known as sericulture now how to process the silk okay now for this what will happen we have to take the cocoons a pile of cocoons we have to take and then we have to keep those cocoons under the sun okay or boiled or they will be exposed to the steam so what will happen when we are going to keep them in the sun or they uh, or uh, uh, they are boiled or when they are exposed to steam what will happen the silk fibers will get separated from the cocoons okay and this process of taking out the threads from the cocoon so that we can use them as silk is known as reeling of the silk fine again i am repeating this process of taking out the threads okay from the cocoons so that we can use them as silk is known as what it is known as reeling of the silk and this reeling of silk that means this process is carried over in special machines okay so these machines are unwinding the threads of fibers from these cocoons okay and after that fine after that the silk threads will be woven to get the silk cloth okay so after the reeling what we are doing these silk fibers they will be spun into the silk threads and the silk threads are woven to get the silk cloth okay now one thing to be noted here is that the resultant fiber which we are getting by the process of reeling is known as raw silk okay the reeling of silk from the reeling of the silk the resultant fiber which we are getting is known as raw silk okay and it can be dyed into various colors now do you know children that about 5500 silk worms are required to produce 1 kg of raw silk how many silk worms 5500 silk worms okay and they will produce 1 kg of raw silk raw silk i have explained right now just now that what it is it is a resulting fiber which we are getting by the process of reeling okay and the cocoon that cocoon is formed of a single continuous thread and that is about 1.5 km in length so these were certain facts i hope you have understood the uh, life history also from this video and also how do uh, we get the silk from the cocoons thank you